what is happening in our skies concerning UFOs. Although they have been seen since the beginning of known history, one thing is very clear. The consistency of these sightings has increased dramatically. But what does this mean for humanity? I'm Brandon Kears. Join me on this first ever Knowing God full-length documentary, UFOs, The Shocking Truth. I don't like it. I'd like to go back just like <laughs> thinking that this isn't real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. I'd like to be happy in my ignorance. Yeah. <laughs>
Now, in order to get a grasp on what this phenomenon is, as related to the Bible, we must first understand a few ancient terms that are interchangeable with today's terms. There are approximately 171,000 English words in the dictionary, but in ancient language of the Bible, there are only 7,000 words. Simply put, there are a lot of words in English that are not available in Hebrew or Greek. For example, one of these words is heaven. And when we read this word heaven in the Bible, in English it can mean the first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, the sky, outer space, the clouds, the spiritual dimension, or the dwelling place of God. We have to read this context of the word in its original form to understand which heaven it's talking about. But the word that really needs to be focused on here is angel. This word can mean a variety of different things, depending on the context in which it was written. The word angel comes from the Greek word angelos, which means messenger, but it can be referring to a human messenger or God's holy messengers. But the way we use the word angel today typically means a celestial being of light that God uses to bring about his glory. Celestial means from outer space or the sky. So by definition, angels are extraterrestrial because they are not from this earth. Now we know that angels are not all good. Just like humans, there are good ones and there are bad ones. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out of heaven, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out of heaven into earth, and his angels were cast out of heaven with him. This word heaven is referring to the dwelling place of God. But notice the place in which the devil and his angels were casted into earth. Why would it say into earth? Is this verse talking about hell or an underground base? Let's look and see if we can find a connection. For thousands of years, UFOs have been seen coming out of the ground and out of the ocean. In fact, the government has a term for these objects that come in and out of our oceans. Unidentified submerged objects or USOs. One of the most famous documented reports of USOs is that of Christopher Columbus's journals on October the 11th, 1492, where a man by the name of Gutierrez reports a glowing object coming out of the water and shooting off. It wasn't long after this sighting when Columbus discovered the New World. But more recently, a man by the name of Phil Schneider, a geologist and engineer, was working as a contractor for the U.S. government in 1979 digging holes for what is called dumbs or deep underground military bases. When while digging one of these bases, he suddenly came across three entities residing in an underground cavern. He managed to shoot two of these entities, but not before one of them shot a beam out, and in the words of Mr. Schneider, opened him up like a fish and took off three of his fingers in the incident. After speaking out about his experience, Schneider was found dead in his apartment, strangled by his own catheter. The official ruling of his death was suicide by strangulation. In conclusion, there is strong evidence that this phenomenon is not only coming from the skies above us, but also inside the earth, as depicted in the book of Revelations, written almost 2,000 years ago. One of the more sinister things that UFOs are associated with is something called the abduction phenomenon in which beings from these objects are taking humans while they are fully conscious and aware and performing various procedures on them against their will. Some of these cases are involving unexplained pregnancies. But what about this phenomenon? Is it anywhere in the Bible? In Genesis 6, the Bible explains that during that time, the sons of God or angels came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. These hybrid beings were called Nephilim. These Nephilim were very large and mighty creatures, and they ruled as kings over many great nations until they were destroyed in the flood over 4,000 years ago. But notice that it says the angels procreated with the humans to make hybrid beings. Is this what is happening once again? Why would they want to do this again, knowing that the last time they tried this, it didn't turn out the way they expected? The book of Revelation says that the beasts will possess supernatural capabilities, most likely a human-angelic hybrid. Hence the reference to the beast, because he is not a human. Could this be the reason why these entities are attempting to create hybrid beings again? 
And if so, what does this mean for the rest of the world? In Matthew 24, 37, Jesus says, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Not only were the days of Noah filled with sin and blasphemy, but the bloodline of Adam was defiled by the Nephilim that plagued the earth. But notice the prophecy that Jesus is proclaiming here. The coming of the Son of Man is a reference to the second coming of Christ, when he returns with his church to reign for a thousand years. This happens after the seven years of tribulation, after the rapture of his church. There are over 450 prophecies about Jesus alone in the Old Testament, not to mention the countless other prophecies that were foretold and fulfilled all throughout scripture. But the most recent prophecy that was foretold in the Bible was the return of Israel as a nation. In the book of Ezekiel 37:21, it says, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. This prophecy was fulfilled in 1948. And going in chronological order, the next prophecy to be fulfilled is the imminent return of Christ and the rapture of the church. So, according to the Bible, UFOs are in fact angels, beings of light from otherworldly domains. There are holy angels and fallen angels. The fallen ones were cast into the earth and continue to manipulate human society until this day. Although this may be disturbing to some, what they ultimately represent is the fulfillment of prophecy and the imminent return of the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.